Welcome to Thriving Tribesmen. My name is Corey, your host, and I'm excited to be making this episode. I've just come off a call, and it was an amazing call. Uh, it was amazing because it's I love it when I'm talking to somebody, and then you can almost see this paradigm shift. Like, almost, all of a sudden, they've got this clarity, and they now know what to do in order to change their relationship. And this was no different for this guy because he said um, his wife turned around and said to him, I'm sexually not attracted to you. I love you. I want to be with you. You're a handsome person. And this is what he said. He said he trains. He still looks good. Um, they've been married for over 15 years. But she just doesn't find him sexually attractive. And he thought it was because of the length of time. And I said, it's not the length of time. I've spoken to guys that have been married for six months and that's happened. And there's guys that I've spoken to that have been married for two years. It doesn't matter. What, what, what she's saying is that um, there's certain behaviors that you do that are triggering my sexual, or at least my primal sexual triggers. So that's the issue that right there. And... I discovered this in the, the most weirdest way. And I remember when we had my crew of guys, a pickup artist, we in London and we used to go out at least four or five nights a week. We got really good at picking up girls, especially, you know, um, picking up in the bar or a club and then going on the same night. So we'd, we'd know exactly what you needed to, to do. And to amp the ante, because there's a time when you when it becomes, it just became boring. And when it became boring, we needed to figure out other ways of making it exciting. And we'd make it exciting or at least gamifying it in a way that um, helped us understand even other deeper concepts. And the way we gamified it was uh, there's a guy, uh, there's, we started um, doing this game where a guy would pick up a girl. And when the pick, during the pickup, you could tell the difference. So... I think we'd done it so many times that we knew when her mind shifts from I'm having a good conversation to I'm attracted to this guy. And you could see it. You see it happening and you, there's certain tells that you can look for. In the sense that, so I'd be watching from a distance or would be watching from a distance or depending on what we're doing, I could be speaking to another girl or whatever. But the game was that I would have to try and steal that girl. As soon as she's now attracted to him, it's my cue to come over and then try and steal her away from him. And it was a fun game. Uh, so you would see this happening and that happened to me so many times. And really the game was to really help us to get better at not caring about the conversation. Like when she's attractive and she's invested and you're getting validation that this really beautiful woman is talking to you and it's quite validating, it's quite exciting. Then when this guy comes, then you know he's got game and he's, he can become a little bit more exciting. So because it, what's happening is that you've now got to that point where she's sexually, at least attracted, maybe even sexually attracted. So you're now sort of uh, doing this game of I care about it, but I don't care about it. So it's almost like this little push-pull. And if another guy comes in, he can come up with better energies because you can see our energy he just has to bring his energy a little bit higher and then be a little bit more exciting and what that does is just divert attention to him and we used to do that quite often so when you knew that the guy was coming in second he's got at least a 70% chance of taking her even though she's attracted and it's because he doesn't care about the conversation. He's not as invested in the conversation as you are. So because you're a little bit invested in that conversation, because you slightly care about it, you come across weak and unattractive. And that's the first point right there. That the fact that you get fully invested into getting a pussy is probably the number one thing that is stopping you from getting pussy <laughs> and that's, you know, there's no other way of putting it that way but i'll put it that way um the moment you pedestal it it moves pressure towards her into a sexual transaction rather than seduction because you're doing all these things 
in order to eventually get this prize. So it's no more a collaborative seduction. It's more of you doing, you're spinning plates, you're being this, um, lack of a better term, uh, juggling monkey that's, <laughs> that's trying to get uh, bananas. <laughs> that's, so you're doing all these things in order to get pussy. And it becomes transactional. And because there's, there isn't that uh, collaborative seduction process, over a period of time, this is the reason why it sort of moves and fades away and she just doesn't see the sexual. Because sexually, she doesn't see that you, you're, you're, you're engaging collaboratively. So that was the first bit. So with a, a friend of mine who's, his name is Brad. And Brad was not, uh, so I don't know if any of you guys have played rugby or not with rugby. Rugby, uh, there's a... The guys I call them props. These are the guys that are at the spear end of the the scrum. So these guys go in. The Brad was big, uh, and he wasn't big as in muscular. He was big as in he had a lot of body fat, and um, he had cauliflower ears. Uh, he had stubby nose. I mean, this guy is not is typical, <laughs> a typical. Uh, rugby player type looking guy like not not the really strong fuzzy uh, muscular guy but yeah so anyways brad was incredible at playing this game incredible and he if you saw brad coming and you were in set you were better off just walking off like literally you could just go ah oh, fuck and then you walk off <laughs> because he was that good he almost had a hundred percent close rate when it comes to 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 attract to somebody you're talking to. Like, literally, he was that good. Firstly, because he knew how to not care about the interaction because that's the, what made it work. The fact that if if you don't care about that interaction because you, or you, you, you don't invest yourself too much into that interaction, um, he knew how to do that. But secondly, what he was good at was to display dominance with his body language and the way he spoke, his voice tone. That, again, was excellent like it was beyond excellent and this is the second point that your body language is key when it comes to being uh, at least triggering her sexual triggers or her primal sexual triggers in order for her to actually start seeing you in a sexual way your voice your body language huge because when you there's certain things that you can convey in terms of being dominant and being a leader just by the way you speak and just by the way you carry yourself. So, and one of the things is that when you get into that interaction, she's already enjoying that interaction with you and the fact that it's just butting in, he might just come up with a, uh, he's already he's already felt your your energy and then he's come and started to either come high, a little bit higher than the energy that you have. But initially, when he's getting into this interaction, she, the key part about it is that she'll be wanting to get rid of him because she's already attracted to me. So she will try and get rid of him. But what then shifts her attention is the fact that he's nonchalant about... She's, he's non-reactive to her... her he's non-reactive to her negative energy towards him and then he persists and then generally she then thinks, oh, what's up with this guy? This guy is quite interesting. The fact that he's not... Uh, <laughs> Is a little bit persistent, and all of a sudden she. This I don't know what uh, how to explain it, but there was always a shift in in the way things were were going. So now imagine he's getting negative energy, but he still keeps his cool. He's un, he's not totally invested in the conversation, but at the same time, I'm beginning to be act like a little bitch because that's another bit that would really uh, move her. Because now I'm because I know it, Brad is here. I'm not trying a little bit harder to keep her focus and maintain her focus which then lowers her sexual intent or at least her sexual desire towards me so i don't know if, if all this is making sense but basically there's a few things that in your relationship if your partner said to you that they are not sexually attracted to you it's got nothing to do with date nights or being romantic or being domesticated and washing dishes and cooking and doing all these things that you think you need to be doing in order to be more to her. Because most guys, that's the initial thing. They think, oh, maybe I need to make do a weekend getaway or maybe 
let me do this romantic gesture, let me buy some more diamonds, let me buy this none of that makes you sexually attractive. What's gonna make you sexually attractive is you behaving in a way that triggers her primal triggers. <laughs> I need to find another way of saying it, or at least activates her primal triggers. It's because that's what she means, like I'm sexually attracted to you. There's certain points it's almost like um equivalent to hunger you know sleep there's certain things that your body requires to happen and triggering activating those sexual triggers is another thing and if you don't do them for a long period of time you she's not doesn't associate sex with you over a period of time she just doesn't associate sex with you or at least sexual desire with you and this is where you are right now. And this is what I'm saying to him. And I said, if you start developing yourself as a leader, start developing yourself and really trying to use your presence and your dominance around her, she will find that extremely, extremely attractive. So, and I said, uh, the few things that you can start doing, especially is your voice tone. So the voice tone is a huge one. And I'm going to give, give you this one because I think this is the first thing that you could change that is quick. The other stuff I would need to at least speak to you. And if you want to learn more about uh, what you might need to do in order to change this, is go to thriving underscore tribesmen on Instagram and then just DM us and we'll get back to you. And what you can do obviously is just um, uh, dominance. You can write the word dominance or you can write body language and they will know which episode you've come from and then we can help you with that. So, the one thing that you can do is your voice tone. Most guys, when they speak, um, they they use a tone where you're supplicating. What that means is that um, if I was speaking to my wife and I was requesting something, I would say, uh, babe, can you get me a sandwich? And you can hear my voice tone, it trails down. If I said, babe, can you get me a sandwich? which is trailing up, it means that I'm unsure of what I'm saying. I'm not confident in what I'm saying. So the trailing down is very, very important. Uh, hold this here. Can you get that for me? Um, wait here. Stop. Don't do that. Those are certain words that you can use and certain sentences that you can use that will show dominance. And most people are afraid to do this because they feel like if you do, she's going to freak out and then um, make it seem like you're some sort of uh, bully or whatever. But she needs that. She wants that. Um, so I'll leave you with this and I, I, I will really uh, go di dive in deeper into like the tactics of body language and uh, voice tone and everything like that in more detail because I think that's another whole entire podcast and I've already done it in minutes. So just go to our Instagram if you want to learn more. Uh, go into thriving underscore tribesmen and we'll be able to get to you and really start showing you the best ways of really transforming your relationship, especially when she says she's not sexually um, attracted to you. So thank you very much for listening. I'll be speaking to you soon. Take care.